Hey, what's up, family? Welcome to Wednesday Night Live. I am Bishop A. Reginald Littman. I'm the proud senior pastor of the greatest church anywhere, New Mountaintop Baptist Church. I'm so excited to share this time of teaching and ministry with you. Hey, welcome in. Make sure you're saying hello in the comments. I look forward to interacting with you in the comments. God bless you. I pray and trust and hope that you've had a wonderful Wednesday and a wonderful week. Hey, don't forget, if you're not a part of our e-class, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and sign up today. It's very simple. Send an email to clearstudies at gmail.com. Again, that's clearstudies at gmail.com and that way you'll get a free colorful pdf handout for the wednesday teachings along with other things that i do that i don't even announce uh, but being a part of our e-class ensures that you'll be on the note as we begin to grow and evolve and do different things for the kingdom of God. And so I want you to be connected. Hello there, it's so good to see every one of you. Thank you so much for popping in and popping on. Make sure you're in the comments. Do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that share button. It helps us to be found in the very crowded algorithms of all of our social media. And we want to be able to get this content out to everyone so they can be blessed by the word and the ministry that happens emanating from the greatest church I know, New Mountaintop Church where we're reaching the world from Winston. And so I'm excited to share with you again this evening. So good to see everyone here. Thank you for taking the time to join us and we praise God for you. Well, we're gonna go ahead and jump into tonight's study. We're continuing now with session four of Daniel, faithful in all circumstances. And we've been talking about episodes from the first few chapters of the Old Testament book of Daniel in which we have learned what it really means to be faithful to God in every circumstance that we face. Make sure you're hitting that thumbs up button for us. Make sure you're sharing it with somebody. Make sure you're in the comments. We certainly appreciate you joining us tonight. You know, there was a truth that we shared in a previous week's Bible study that I want to just reiterate very quickly, and that is this. Genuine faith remains strong amid dire circumstances and uncertain outcomes. Again, genuine faith remains strong amid dire circumstances and even uncertain outcomes. And when we look at this book of Daniel, we see just that. We see some dire circumstances and we definitely see some uncertain outcomes, or at least they appear to be uncertain because they did not know how they were going to come out of that human sized oven called a fiery furnace. They didn't know for sure how God was going to deliver them, but they were confident that God would in fact deliver them. And he is a delivering God, isn't he? You know, he's a God who will take care of his own. How many of y'all know that? You ought to say me in those comments right now. I know God will take care of his children. So as we continue tonight, we're going to be talking about the king's life lesson, the king's life lesson. And for that, we're going to jump over now to Daniel chapter number four. And in Daniel chapter number four, verse number 28 through 30, we read these words. All this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. Twelve months later, as the king was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon, listen to what he said now, church. He said, is not this the great Babylon I have built as the royal residence 
by my mighty power and for the glory of my majesty. Now, already off the cuff, you already know this is not going to turn out well for him. Anytime we put ourselves in front of God, anytime we become glory chasers and praise stealers, we are in trouble. And God is going to show us who the boss really is. Welcome to you guys. If you're just coming in, thank you for being here. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you hit that like button so others can find us. Now we move on with verse number 31. And listen to what it says. Even as the words were on his lips, a voice came from heaven. This is what is decreed for you, King Nebuchadnezzar. Your royal authority has been taken from you. You will be driven away from people and will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like the ox. Seven times will pass by for you until you acknowledge that the Most High, that's God himself, is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and gives them to anyone he wishes. Immediately, what had been said about Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled. He was driven away from people and ate grass like the ox. His body was drenched with the dew of heaven until his hair grew like the feathers of an eagle and his nails like the claws of a bird. Now I'm telling you, God has a way of showing you who is in charge. Now look at verse number 34 with me. At the end of that time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes toward heaven and my sanity was restored. Lord have mercy. <laughs> then I praised the Most High. I honored and glorified him who lives forever. His dominion is an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures from generation to generation. Now, listen, anytime Men try to take the glory from God. Anytime we become praise stealers and glory chasers for ourselves, God will always show us who the true king is. And I love what he said. He said that it wasn't until he looked toward heaven that he regained this sanity. Hey, might it be that some of us are going through what we are? in the way that we are, because we're looking in the mirror rather than looking at our maker. And Nebuchadnezzar only discovered his sanity restored when he looked toward God. Well, hey, let's look at the first point tonight. This is so powerful. Number one, God is in charge. You are not. Somebody type that into the comments real fast. God is in charge. You are are not. Now, this is so powerful, ladies and gentlemen, because we learned from this particular study and from this particular point, the painful lessons that Nebuchadnezzar would discover. Number one, God's dealings with Nebuchadnezzar caution us always to remember that he is in control and we are not. Listen, I don't care how smart you think you are, <laughs> how much you've achieved and accomplished and all of that. If it hadn't been for God's power in your life, you would not be who you are, where you are, or have what you have. Can somebody say amen in those comments right now? If it wasn't for God, ladies and gentlemen, we would not be, have, or become who we are. It's only by the grace of God. And we learn we're not in control. God is. And then there's another painful lesson that we get from Nebuchadnezzar's experience. Our smarts, our abilities, our accomplishments, watch this, do not ultimately determine our futures or provide for our security. 
So our abilities, our accomplishments, listen, how smart we are is not necessarily the determining factor for our futures. And that's a very powerful revelation right there to understand that, yes, we can go to school and we can have a high IQ and we can have multiple degrees and even train in multiple disciplines. But it is not us who has the final say on our future. And what a word that is for us to remember that it is God that leads and directs our future. And it's not about us. Some folk in the church need to learn that phrase right there. It is not about us. It's all about God. Somebody type in the comments, it's not about me. It's all about him. I'm so glad to see you all coming on right now. God bless you. Welcome to Wednesday in the Word. Well, listen, what does this passage teach us about depending on each of the following? Now, I'd like for you to type your responses in. I'm going to go ahead and give you mine so that I don't hold you too long. We learn concerning human power and authority, this passage teaches us. Listen, don't depend on human power and authority because the authority is all God's. The power is all God's. And when we depend on human power and authority, we trust less and less in God. And you will discover like Nebuchadnezzar did that when your faith is in humans, your faith is not in God. And God will never allow anyone or anything to come ahead of him. Even human wisdom, we can be brilliant, and I'll tie in accomplishments here, we can be brilliant, we can be accomplished men and women, we can have a portfolio out of this world, our wall can be decorated with more degrees than a thermometer, but human wisdom and human accomplishments do not determine our end. It is God and God alone who determines our future. And so we cannot rest on the laurels of accomplishment. We cannot uh, rest on what we've done and how smart we think we are and how brilliant we are and all of that. If God does not have his hand on our lives, there's no telling where we will end up at. Well, Let's move to teaching point number two. And I see your comments. I love it. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Those of you who are catching the replay, definitely type your comments in. I want to know what you think about it. Teaching point number two, God gives the kingdom to who he will. Woo! That's a powerful lesson right there that God gives the kingdom to who he will. Now, the only explanation for earthly success is God's gracious provision. Don't forget that. Were it not for the gracious provision of God, none of us would have the success that we do. It's not our brilliance. It's not our intelligence. It's not our intellect. It is simply the grace of God. No one is worthy or deserving of the kingdom of an absolutely holy God, and yet he claims us. Isn't that wonderful that even though God knows our human frailty, faults, proclivities, inclinations, he still claims us and still blesses us when we honor him and put him first. And if we have any standing before God at all, it's only because of the grace of God. Don't forget that, folks. It's not our good looks. It's not our good name. It's not what we have achieved or accomplished. It's nothing but the grace of the living God. Somebody type grace into the comments. Come on. Are there any products of God's grace that are watching or listening to me right now? I, ladies and gentlemen, am a product of the grace of God. Were it not for grace, I would not be where I am in ministry, in life, in my own individual standing. Thank God every day that he graces us with his goodness, his love, and his presence. 
In fact, I like what Titus 3 says. Look at it with me. Titus 3, verse number 4 and 5 says, When the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us. Not because of righteous things we had done, but all because of his mercy. I know it. Mercy. The mercy and grace of God are the only reason why we have success at anything that we do. Now let's move to teaching point number three. God loves the lowly. And that word lowly means the humble. God loves the humble. Now, if a low life like Nebuchadnezzar was granted the kingdom, even before he came to that place that he recognized who God is, there's hope for everybody. There's hope for the lowliest of people. If Nebuchadnezzar could have a turnaround, everybody you know has the potential for a turnaround in their lives and has the potential to come into a true knowledge of who God is. And it doesn't matter how great or how difficult their heart may be. God has a way of penetrating our hearts and getting us into the kingdom. And I'm saying that because I want you to be prayerful for your loved ones that, that may be living a life that's not pleasing to God. Listen, don't ever give up. It's not too late as long as there's breath in their body. Keep praying. Keep believing. Keep trusting God for God to work in their lives. And this is an amazing story, isn't it? Of how we see this king, Nebuchadnezzar, on his knees, scratching, nails grown out, hair grown out like feathers, literally having lost his mind until he looked up. Oh, brothers and sisters, what a reminder that is for us of the need to look up. If you look up to God, <laughs> he'll give you your mind back. He'll give you your peace. He'll give you your sanity. He'll give you a way out. He'll give you a right perspective about your life. And if God reached Nebuchadnezzar, he can reach anybody, though they may have sinned greatly. If God can reach Nebuchadnezzar, there's nothing that God can't do to restore human life, to restore right relationships. Listen, trust God to bring change in the life of those that you love. And that's one of the main takeaways from tonight's teaching. Well, when we look at Daniel chapter number four, let's jump to verse 34 now, and we're almost done. At the end of that time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, listen to what he says again, this is so powerful, raised my eyes toward heaven and my sanity was restored. Praise God. Then I praised the Most High. I honored and glorified him who lives forever. His dominion is an eternal dominion. Nebuchadnezzar comes to realize that he as a human is not eternal, is not permanent, not here forever. That at a moment's notice, if God removes his hand, then he could literally lose it all. But he says so profoundly here in verse 34 of chapter 4, that his dominion is an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures from generation to generation. What a word this is, folks. You know, Nebuchadnezzar raised his eyes toward heaven and he was restored. The king's actions there is a signal of admitting his lowliness before God. Because when we lift our eyes up, it means the one to whom we are lifting our eyes up is higher than we are. And we recognize we are lower than they are. 
I love Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills. Then there's a question, from whence cometh my help? It's rhetorical because he knows the answer and it gives the answer. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. So let me ask you a question. Do you believe Nebuchadnezzar's repentance and confession of God were real? Or do you think he may have just been trying to get out of a situation? Let me wait a minute to see what your reaction is to that question. Do you think Nebuchadnezzar's repentance and confession of God were real? Or do you think he was just trying to get out of that situation? Let me see what y'all are saying here. <laughs> I appreciate that. Listen, the truth of the matter is, whether we think it was real or he was just trying to get out of the situation, God knows when a person's heart is real. God knows and God alone knows when a person's thoughts are pure. And that's good news that God knows our heart regardless of what other people think. Hey, I pray that you got something out of this teaching tonight. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button, like, share, and subscribe. Can't wait to preach to you on Sunday morning at 930 on New Mountaintops YouTube channel. Check me out every Tuesday for TNT Tuesday night teaching and right back here for Wednesday in the Word at 7 p.m. I love you all. God bless you. And I look forward to sharing with you next time.